Jay Straight Am, everybody. Earlier today, Joe Biden was inaugurated as the 46th president of the United States, so I thought I'd take the opportunity to talk about another major difference that I see between American-born Hindus and first-generation Indian immigrant Hindus with relation to American politics, which is that the second-generation people, people who were born and raised here, really don't consider India-U.S. relations to be something that they uh, that they care about at all in terms of deciding on who to vote for, whether they're uh, Democrat or Republican. The strong majority of them tend to lead left. They tend to be uh, Democrats as opposed to Republicans. But the kinds of views that you'll hear from them are basically exactly the same kind of views that you'd hear from white liberals who vote for the Democrat Party. It's not anything different, and they don't think about India-U.S. relations at all, and when people like myself or when first-generation people try to get them to, you know, make that part of the consideration on, uh, you know, make that part of the things that they look at in their consideration on who to vote for, they basically have this response, well, well, we're not from India, you know, we were born here, and this is, you know, our parents' country, but we're you know, born here and raised here, and we don't really have loyalties outside of here, outside of some kind of, you know, cheapened, superficial relationship with Indian culture uh, and Hinduism and so on, right? And when I talk to first-generation people, this is often the biggest thing that they think about is the India-U.S. relations, because not only are they firmly rooted in the culture, they're also firmly rooted in the identity of being Indian, that even after they've lived here in the U.S. for decades and have gotten, uh, you know, U.S. citizenship and all of that, the U.S.-India relationship means more to them than whatever their views on domestic politics might be. Now, I would also say that even with the first-generation people, it's difficult to ascertain how much that is something that they think about and talk about versus how much is it, how much is it something that they think about, talk about, and actually use to determine who they're going to vote for. Now, I haven't seen the official statistics for this, but what I kind of glean from uh, basic kind of not seeing polling data in itself, but seeing you know articles talking about polling data is that Trump has done better with Indians and also East Asians and other groups than previous uh, Republican candidates have done. And just my anecdotal experience in talking to people is I definitely do see uh, a lot more uh, support for Trump among first-generation Indians here in the U.S. than I did for Republican candidates in the past. Now, how much of that is due to India-U.S. relations and how much of it is due to, you know, other things that Indian people also like, for example, Trump's strong stance on uh, Islamic terrorism and the settlement of the so-called refugees, so on and so forth. Obviously, that is something that Hindus are going to care about. And also the, the kind of uh, stances of being tough on China are also something that's going to attract uh, Hindus to your cause, even outside of the India-U.S. relations angle. But I'm emphasizing this point because having a kind of meaningful, strong loyalty back to India, even as a modern country, I think is, it's one of the, it may be the most kind of controlling, sounds like a negative word, but one of the strongest kind of motivating factors to keep people grounded in the culture. Now, this may sound weird to most people, but this is basically my thought process on that issue, where if, you have, if you're interested in India-U.S. relations, even though you were born and raised in the U.S. and you don't have any you know, real desire to go live in India at any point in your life, that's going to naturally kind of necessitate that you're going to get interested in Indian politics to some degree. And I think this is also something that the second generation does a terrible job of, that you'll find almost nobody of the second generation 
uh, even follows Indian politics at all because, again, they kind of think, you know, that's the old country, that's our parents' country. We're here now. And I think that part of that is because they're deracinated from the culture. But another part of it is just a part of being an American because we are kind of spoiled in this country where our elections and our domestic politics are looked at a lot more by the rest of the world than really any other country is in the sense that it's not difficult to find Indians or Western Europeans or, you know, people from all over the world that follow current events that can have a decent and good conversation with you on U.S. politics. But trying to find the reverse is, you know, extremely difficult outside of people who just like kind of, you know, live and breathe politics as a topic. So I don't really want to put all of the blame on the second generation for that, but it's definitely something to to keep in mind because having a, a connection to your culture is not only something that's done through the family and done through religion, right? Culture and values and worldview is something that's imbibed through everything. It's through, you know, your relationships with friends, acquaintances, following current events, and things of this nature, which if you're born and raised here, you have to kind of purposely seek that out in the sense that Indians only make up maybe 1% of the population of the United States. And obviously many of those people are not Hindu. They might be Sikh, Muslim, Christian, or, uh, you know, just not religious at all. And so for us, we don't have that kind of natural avenue to imbibe and intake and uphold normal Indian dharmic kind of values, which, I mean, they come so naturally to people who were born and raised in India that they don't even consciously think about it to a large degree. And getting people connected to Indian politics, it's definitely something that I try to do uh, when I'm talking with my fellow second generation people. But I would advise, you know, if there are people who have kids or they're about to have kids or something like that here in the U.S., make sure to expose them to this because it's, one, it's an extremely interesting uh, topic. I mean, I think it's astronomically more interesting than American politics. And two, most importantly, like I've been uh, kind of repeatedly saying, it is going to serve a very uh, effective role in keeping them grounded in the culture in a way that just teaching them about the strictly religious parts of of our culture would not do. Personally, I got inter I got interested in uh, Indian politics because of my dad. Actually, my dad is a very staunch BJP supporter uh, and al always has been. Really, I mean, he he's told me about how he was in. I think he was in his doing his masters when the emergency happened back in the uh, mid to late seventies, and so at that time he kind of he just became anti the Congress party and, you know, his whole friend circle and so on. There was this general anti-Congress sentiment that was sweeping across the country, especially for young people, so on and so forth. We're all aware of that. But then, you know, he got interested in the BJP, Hindutva and all those kinds of things. And those kinds of uh, topics would come up a lot in my conversations with him, even when I was uh, a kid. And so, there was kind of a natural avenue for me because of my dad's interest and him being someone I could openly talk about uh, or talk with about these kinds of things. But I think, you know, lots of lots of Indian kids don't have that because, one, they don't ask the questions. Because the, the thing is, something I've found about Indian parents is they may have lots of knowledge and lots of information and be able to teach lots of very useful things that would be effective at keeping the the next generation grounded, but they only give that knowledge if they're specifically asked, because the only things they're interested in really instilling in kids is study, 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 get a good job, get, go get, you know, get into a prestigious college and a prestigious degree and study and study and study. And so these kind of more meaningful uh, ideas of being rooted in the culture kind of get lost and put on the back burner, as I've talked about before. But, uh, you know, in closing, I would just say getting the second generation interested, one, in India-U.S. relations is something that they should care about when evaluating American politics. That's very key. 
and also getting them to have some some level of following uh, with Indian politics. Now, you know, one of the issues with this is if they're not, uh, if they can't understand Hindi, it is kind of difficult because outside of, you know, maybe Swarajya and Op India and, you know, very few other websites, it's difficult to find kind of, you know, meaningful English language material on a lot of Indian current events. Um, you know, of course, there's places like Times of India and things like that, but that doesn't have much of a partisan spin that you may be interested in uh, having, which is going to be, you know, if someone is interested in American politics and follows it, they would find it very much of an impediment when it comes to Indian politics. So that's all I've got for you guys today. Uh, please let me know your thoughts in the comments below.